And serious photographers do not want to throw good data away. And so we have raw images. And what's happening here is that we start with the sensor and we get the original information. It does need to go through a raw converter, so it still needs to convert this information into an electronic format. The camera does add white balance. Whatever white balance you have set on your camera, it will put on there, but the cool thing is it's removable and changeable. So if you screwed up out in the field, you could redo it later, and this is one of, it's, there's hardly anything that you can do in photography where you screw it up in the field and you can fix it later without any damage at all. And this is one of the only ones that you can do that way. From here, you end up with a raw file. And different camera companies like Canon and Nikon have their own pr proprietary raw file. And you can kind of think of this as a, their own proprietary language that they speak in. And if you email your best friend a raw image, they're just going to say, what the, I can't see anything, all right? Because they probably don't have the right software for it. And so what we have to do is we have to use some sort of software to turn this into a JPEG so that we can send it to them. Now, your cameras are going to come with software, or you can use other programs. I like to use Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, and there's multitudes of other programs that will read all these raw photos. And the reason we're shooting the raws is that we can always go back to them and work with them. So let me go to this next one here. So JPEGs are processed and compressed. RAWs are unprocessed original data. I think a good analogy is food. Do you like your food processed and compressed? Or do you like raw vegetables? What do you think is better for you? Okay. So the JPEGs are very convenient. And I work with JPEGs all the time because I'm going to upload some images to my website or I want to send somebody a photograph of something. I'm going to use a JPEG. But I shoot in raw because I want to keep all the original data and I don't want to throw anything away. And here, keeping all the important information. As I mentioned at the beginning of this class, part of my preparations for the class is I wanted my images to look as good as possible. I went back to the original raw images and I used the new software that I have and my new eyes and brain and what a picture should look like and I've redeveloped the photograph. It's kind of like the old days of film, keeping the negative around. Most people, hardly anyone, would throw their negatives away because they have prints. You want to keep the negatives because you go back to the originals. Now, we do have the problem of larger file sizes, which is really not a big deal these days. You can buy big, large memory cards that hold thousands of raw files without a problem. The main problem is that it can't be read by some software. And so you need to have your computer download system in place that works for you. There are some people that just don't have this set up. And I tell them, shoot JPEG for now, but plan on shooting RAW. And so if you're serious about photography, you should either shoot RAW or plan on shooting RAW. Now, there are always exceptions to the rules. The cross-country photos that I shoot, I shoot in JPEG. I just shoot so many of them, I just don't want to fill up my hard drive with thousands and thousands of RAW photos, of which I'm making five by sevens and putting into a simple slideshow. I know the final use of them and I'm shooting so many of them. There are reasons for shooting JPEGs, but on all my serious work, I like to shoot in RAW. And a good example of why I do this is because you get a greater exposure range with RAW. Down in the slot canyons in Arizona, you're going to have some very high contrast situations of bright brights and dark darks. The image you get off the back of your camera is not 100% accurate to what you are going to get. You're limited by the quality of the LCD screen. In this case, you can see the clipped highlights and the clipped darks. If I take an image in JPEG, I can take it into Photoshop or Lightroom and I can adjust it. And you can see I've still lost some of these shadow areas and a lot of the highlights. But if I shoot that image in RAW and I take it in, the only thing I'm losing here is, where is it, where is it? Just a little bit here and a little bit here. I'm able to pull back and rescue some of that data. And so if you're unsure about the exposure and it's kind of a really wide area, RAW is definitely going to help you out quite a bit there. If you've nailed down exposure, uh, the JPEGs can do all right, but this is one of the great reasons I can go back and work with the original light, you might say. 